Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to our step-by-step -step easy build guide on how you can put together this $492 Fortnite gaming PC even if you've never built a PC before. I'm going to show you exactly which parts I chose why and then how to set up the system and I have all the parts linked in the video description along with some alternative parts uh, if one of these are out of stock or if you have a little bit more money to spend. Now along with the Fortnite video that we put out which you guys can check out by clicking this card above, I also made a video on how this thing handles 4K video editing. So if you want to see that, there's going to be a link in the video description. So if you like those videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and enable those notifications so you guys don't miss out on future videos, which we have a lot of great videos coming. So for this video, we had two main goals. First is to keep this under a certain budget, under $500, so that almost anybody could afford it, even if you're just getting into PC gaming. And the second one was getting competitive levels of performance in Fortnite at 1080p, so we could get a solid 60 FPS while having good graphics quality, and we did achieve this. Now I'm gonna go over all of these parts. Once again, they're linked in the video description. And at the heart of the build, we have this Intel i3 processor. It's an HN CPU that is quad core with really good per core performance at a very great price point. So this thing is really kind of the best entry level CPU and four cores is all that you really need right now for gaming and even if you buy a more expensive graphics card this thing won't be a bottleneck. Next up, I'm going to start off with our graphics card here, and we chose the RX 560 because of the price point that it comes in and the level of performance that it offers. Now, if you have a little bit more cash, the first thing that I would upgrade for gaming is the graphics card. Even though this does give us really good performance for the money, I would probably upgrade to the NVIDIA 1060, and that will really take it up to the next level if you have some room in your budget. Now let's move on to our SSD. Now this wasn't the cheapest thing I could choose. I could have gotten a standard SSD, but I really like the convenience of having an M.2. You just plug it in, put one screw in, and that's it. So it's nice and convenient, and it's also fast and nice for gaming when you're loading in. Next up, we have our RAM, and this is eight gigabytes of DDR4, a 2,666 megahertz RAM. And if you're gonna be doing a video editing PC and you have a little bit more money, I would upgrade this to 16 gigabytes. But for gaming, eight gigabytes is enough. And I chose this one specifically because of the price point. Now onto the power supply. We have a 500 watt white edition power supply. I mainly chose this because of the price point. And a lot of people overspend on their power supplies. You really don't even need this much for this build. I've actually used this power supply three separate times, or this is the third time. It performs great, and it's going to be plenty. So I'd rather spend more money on other parts. Now let's talk about the motherboard. I decided to spend a little bit more money than I had to to get this motherboard because it had some extra features, including four RAM slots. A lot of the less expensive motherboards only have two, so if you get a dual channel kit like the one we chose out, you're gonna be stuck to just eight gigs of RAM unless you wanna replace all of your RAM. So I definitely thought it was worth spending a little bit more money and getting something a little bit higher end. Hey guys, it's Max from the future. I just want to let you know that I somehow ordered an older version of that motherboard. Uh, we did get the newer version and it looks almost identical. So keep following the build guide. Everything's going to be matching up perfectly. Just make sure you order the one from the link in the video description so you get the new gen version, not the older one. And finally, we have our Cooler Master Case. Now I chose this for a few reasons. This is actually the second time I'm building with it. It's fairly easy to build with, especially for this price point. So it comes in in our budget, but it also looks really cool as well. You don't want to get something that's cheap looking and kind of boring. So we have a full acrylic side window, which is uh, tinted. And we also have these thumb screws here. So it makes it easy to take the panel off. And along with that, you can actually swap out these little uh, inserts here so you can change up the color. So for this price point, I really like this case. So like I said at the start, I have a full list of parts in the video description along with some alternatives if you have a little bit more money and some extra accessories and peripherals uh, if you want to pick those up as well, including some monitor options. So let's get right into the build. All right, guys, so we're going to start off working with a motherboard. I like to set it on top of the motherboard box so you don't damage any of the soldering points at the back. And we're going to start off by installing the M.2 SSD. But to do that, we need to open up our side panel here and take out the little hardware box on the inside, which has the screw. So actually inside this box are the inserts to change the colors on the front panel. So we don't need those, but I'm gonna grab this little baggie and this is where we're gonna have all of the screws that we're gonna need. So there's a lot of different screws in here, but we need the one that is really small with the flat top. There's two of them included in here, but we're only gonna use one. So let's grab our M.2 SSD and we're gonna insert it at an angle. It only goes in one way, so don't force it in. Typically it's with the sticker facing the top and actually, 
uh, I just noticed that it at, comes with a screw on the motherboard. A lot of motherboards, a lot more expensive ones, don't have one inserted already. So I'm going to pull this out, grab a little screwdriver here. Once again, push it in an angle, press it down, line up your little screw here, and make sure not to over tighten it because we already have a good connection. Next, let's install our CPU. I'm going to start off by opening up this little tray here and you just have to pull this bar down and it's gonna open up like this. And when you're taking your CPU out of the little plastic case, don't touch the top of it. You don't wanna get your oils from your fingers on it and mess up your thermal performance. Grab it by the edges and on the CPU, there's a little triangle at the bottom left-hand side and that matches up with the triangle on the socket. And for this, we just wanna carefully drop it in here. Don't force it in, align it and it should drop right in. Keep the cover up on the top going to push this down and it, the little uh, tray actually locks into this uh, screw on the motherboard and as you press down this little cover will pop off. Now let's install the CPU cooler. For this one I'm just using the included Intel cooler. I do have an alternative that is fairly inexpensive linked in the video description and I would suggest getting that and it has its own installation guide. For this one it's very easy to install which is good. You literally just set it on top. Don't touch the thermal paste. Uh, align all these little pins with the holes on the motherboard. Try not to move it around a lot once you set it down. And we're really just going to push down on all four of these corners. And they just clip in. There we go. And then now I'm going to take this little cable out and I'm going to plug it into the CPU fan section. Let's plug it in. And when you plug in a lot of these connectors, you can only do them one way and it has a little locking pin. Now I'm going to install the RAM. You can do this afterwards when the motherboard is inside of the case and you might have an easier time uh, screwing down your motherboard without the RAM inserted, but it's easier to show you guys how to properly do it when the motherboard's out here. Uh, we just have two sticks. So for this motherboard, you're going to insert it into the second slot and the fourth slot. So you want to pay attention. If you have a different one, check your motherboard's manual. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, opening up these little clips on each side. And on your RAM sticks, you have this cutout here and it's offset. So you can only put it in one way and then you're going to apply some force on one corner and then the other, and it's going to click in. If it's not going in, make sure you have it aligned properly. So let's do the second one. There we go. Now we're going to get the case ready for our motherboard and all those components. So I'm going to set that off to the side. I'm going to start off with removing the rear panel here. After that, we're going to install our I.O. shield, which is going to cover up all the empty spots for our inputs and outputs. For this one, you want these three little cutouts for the audio to be at the bottom, and then our PS2 port and USBs at the top. Now with that installed, we have to screw in our standoffs. Standoffs look like this. They're included with your case, and they're meant to support and hold up the motherboard. So as you guys can see here, we have six different cutouts for the screws, and that's what we have to install in the case. It's pretty easy in this case. They're just these ones right here, six of them on the left hand side. I'm going to start off by just hand threading them and then using the standoff tool to tighten it down all the way so it won't unscrew later if you take out the motherboard. Now we're going to insert our motherboard. You want to pay attention to where the cutouts are. It's going to sit on the standoffs and just do this carefully. Take your time. You don't want to scratch the bottom on those standoffs. You're going to drop it in and then pay special attention so that all your little inputs and outputs line up to the IO shield here and then a couple of the standoffs actually have little uh, risers so lock in here. Now we're going to use six of these included screws to hold down the motherboard. Take your time and just don't over tighten it. Now we're going to install our power supply so I'm going to grab it here. Um, this case does have a filter at the bottom so we want the fan to be facing the bottom and I'm going to try to grab this bundle of wires here and pull it through the back side. We're going to align it towards the back and inside the power supply box we have these four included screws. I'm going to push the power supply against the case and right where you see um, the threads for the screws, you'll screw this thing down. Now we have a bunch of wires here. We're not going to be using all of them and I'm going to show you where to route uh, the different ones and which ones we do and don't need. This guy needs to go to this top right corner. There's not enough room through here with this case, so I'm going to drop it and push it through this little section right here. Now the next one we need is going to be this 24 pin. It's the thickest set of wires with a bunch of connectors. This one's going to go into this slot in the middle here. 
And then for our graphics card, we have this set right here that says PCIe for PCI Express. We're going to push this one through this section right over here, the lower one. And then all of these cables right here, we don't need. If you're going to install a standard hard drive in here with a lot more space, you're going to need these or if you're going to have some other kind of accessories. But I'm just going to bundle these back up. Now we also have these cables that are included with the case. They're all ran through one section. And I'm going to do this a little bit different just so we have a cleaner setup. This largest one with a bunch of pins is for USB 3.0. I'm going to run this one through the same as our 24 pin, this slot right here. And here we have all of our system connectors. And this one right here is labeled USB. And this one's probably going to be our audio. Yep, they're all labeled on here. I'm going to run these through the bottom here, right where we have our power supply. That way we have a cleaner setup. Now let's flip the case around, set it down, and start connecting. We're going to start off with our 8-pin CPU connector. On the back, we have these little clips. So this is how you know which way it goes in. We're going to line it up right here at the top left-hand side. I'm going to bend this down. And now we're going to connect our 24-pin. And you're going to have to hold this little addition to it. I'm going to bend it down. And it's going to plug into that large slot there with our actual locks on this side here. Now we're going to do our USB 3 connection. There's a little uh, pin there, so it will only go one way. It's going to, going to line it up. Take your time. and Now let's connect the front audio and front USB. These only go in one way, so make sure you take your time. And the little label on, the, on these pins face down towards the power supply. And now let's connect the power switch, the reset, and the LED. Uh, these have labels for positive and negatives, and on the motherboard, it lists that as well. So just take your time, line it up. If there is no label, I typically use this little arrow to connect towards positive. Now let's connect the case fan. This is going to plug in right above the CPU where we have that power connector. Uh, the connector on the fan is a three pin when we have four coming out out of the motherboard. So you want to keep this towards the right side and the lock will only go in one way. This case only comes with one case fan, but there's also room for two more up front and that's very easy to install. I'm gonna link in the video description two cheap case fans along with case fans that I really like for a little bit more money. I'll show you guys just how to pop this panel off. There's little clips on the back, but you don't really have to push down on them. It actually comes off fairly easy. Just apply some pressure at the bottom and it will pop right off. And then you're going to align the case fans from the rear and screw them in in these little screw points with the screws that are included. And, and then at the end, we're going to plug them into uh, some of these extra connectors that we didn't end up using. And now it's time for the graphics card. We're going to start off with unscrewing these top two PCI slot covers. And we're going to want to keep these little screws because they're going to hold down our graphics card. And now we're going to take off the little PCI slot cover on the graphics card. And this little section right here is going to slide in right in between the case and the motherboard. So be careful when you're inserting it. We want to take our time, align our connectors to the motherboard, and evenly kind of press down. And you'll notice that it actually locks in place. Now we can grab our screwdriver and reinstall these little screws. So as I was installing this graphics card, I actually noticed that there are no additional power connectors that are needed for this. So I guess it's been a while since I've built such a budget build. Most of the graphics cards do need additional power, but this one draws enough power through the motherboard connector. So if you are going to be upgrading to a higher end graphics card, you will need these additional power, uh, power cables here. And they plug in just the same way as everything else. It only goes in one way. I'm going to go ahead and tuck it back in along with all those extra cables. And lastly, I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing some cable management. I'm going to pull out this power cable we didn't use, pull out some of the excess slack in some of these other cables just to make it look a little bit nicer. You can use some of the zip ties that are included in your case, tie everything down to these included little uh, slots, and then put the side panels back on. All right, guys, so I set up the monitor, keyboard, mouse, plug that in. I'm going to I plug the power supply cable in, make sure it's on the, set to the on position. Let's power it on. And sometimes you got to turn it on and off a few times if it's a brand new system, nothing's installed to make sure that everything shows up properly. If it doesn't, you could try to connect to the actual motherboard instead of the graphics card. Sometimes there's issues. Um, but right now we are connected via HDMI to the graphics card. And if you can't get it to boot, you can also try to uh, take the graphics card out and just connect to the motherboard because it does have integrated graphics. So let me hit 
I don't know which button we need, but maybe F2 or F8. Um, on the screen, it was showing to select a proper boot media. If we go over here to the side, we're going to see our CPU, our temps at 39, which is great. And we also show 8 gigs of RAM. So everything is displaying properly. I'm going to move over here to um, the peripherals. And our initial display output is set to PCIe 1. This should be by default, meaning it's our dedicated graphics card, not the built-in one. And now we should be good. Uh, we see our SSD that showed up. Uh, so I'm going to just go to save and exit settings. Now we're going to install Windows. I'm not going to show you how to create the actual USB. It's super easy. This is a 32 gigabyte USB 3.0. I'm going to have a link to Microsoft's website where you can download the USB Windows creation tool. It's step by step, very easy. You don't have to have a license key to actually download it. And even to set up Windows and be able to use Windows, you don't have to have a key uh, anymore. So I'm going to grab this, plug it into a USB 3.0 slot. That's one of the blue ones. And then I'm going to hit Save and Exit. So it's still not grabbing that USB key, unfortunately. This time, when we're going to restart, I'm going to hit F12, which is the correct button to select what you want to boot from. OK, so here we have our menu. And I'm going to select UEFI Samsung Flash Drive Partition 1 out of the list. And there you go. We have that familiar uh, little Windows logo. And here, this is very easy. It's also step by step. And here, if you have a product key, you can go ahead and enter it. Or you can just hit, I don't have a product key. And surprisingly, uh, Microsoft will now let you install and use Windows pretty much as long as you want with just a little a logo on the corner saying that it's not activated. I'm just going to select the Home option. Here we're going to select the Custom, Install Windows Only. Select your SSD or your drive. Hit New, Apply, and OK. So that's going to format your SSD or your hard drive. And after it's formatted, all we do is hit Next. And there we go. Now we're going to be installing Windows. It doesn't take too long for it to do so. As soon as Windows 10 is finished installing, you're going to get to set up your computer name, sign in or create a Microsoft account, and then you're going to land on the desktop. So I don't need to show you guys that. It's just like if you were to buy one uh, from the store. After that, I would suggest connecting to the internet and then downloading uh, the latest drivers for your graphics card and then allowing Windows Update to do its thing, make sure you have all the latest drivers and uh, security updates, stuff like that. So that part of it is very simple. And then you can download Fortnite or any other games that you have or video editing software. So if you guys did not see our Fortnite video or our 4K video editing, uh, you guys will be able to use the links in the description or use the end cards. Once again, uh, you guys can check the description for all the parts along with alternatives and different suggestions on peripherals, uh, fans for this system. And then if you guys want to overclock the CPU or set the RAM timing higher, you guys could definitely do that. I'm not going to show you how. There's lots of videos on YouTube. But I will say, if you're going to do some overclocking on the CPU, definitely get that suggested CPU cooler instead of using the built-in or included one with the Intel CPU. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys are subscribed and you guys have those notifications enabled so you guys don't miss out on future videos. We're going to have more builds coming up in the future along with a lot of other great interesting videos. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.